Welcome to the DL Boxing Podcast. I am your host, Coach D, along with co-host neighborhood hero Ryan Reels and Bad Chaz, where we talk about the sport you and I love, boxing. All right, guys. Well, hey, what's hey, up, this host? is not a virtual background, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we are here at the Central California Silver Gloves Tournament in Hanford, California. We are honored to be special guests here. How are you guys feeling, man? Awesome, Great, man. Great. This is a this is a special privilege. It's yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you, Ruben. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank the you. boxing community is just uh, you know one big love. You know, everybody yeah. has each other's back. And uh, we've been very uh, greeted very gratefully here. Yes, so thank far, you. Man. Yes, so we, we love it. Thank you so much, mm-hmm. man. Well, let's get underway, guys. We have a special guest uh, for us today. Let me introduce him. Fighting out of the red corner. He is a 2020 silver medalist. Out of Tulare, California, with a professional record of four wins, no defeats, four big wins by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Torres Jr. Hey man, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Richard? What's up? How's it going? Welcome good, good, man. Come on, step up to the here mic. Hey, it's an honor for you to have you here on our uh, DL Boxing Podcast. Yeah. Um, let me get a question right off the bat. Uh, what does it mean for you to represent the youth here in this amateur tournament uh, here today? I mean, it's incredible. You know, the first national tournament I ever won was Silver Gloves. And so oh, to wow. see like these these faces here and it kind of I see myself in them, you know, and I, I'm just really thankful that I saw a lot more heavyweights than I usually do. You know, I see a lot of these little guys there that I'm like, oh, man, that's a big dude. I, we would have never been in the Central Valley. So I, sometimes I kind of like hope I had a little influence on that. But overall, yeah. I think I was able to to tell people and I want to be able to show people that like I'm just an average Joe from the Central Valley. If I could do it, any of these guys can do it, too. Beautiful, beautiful comedy. Yeah. Nice. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of the the kids here look up to you, you know, as a, as a, you know inspiration to them, and and so it means a lot to see 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 you here at their functions. I'm sure you inspire the young folks here. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, and I, like I'm coming out here too because like I have a couple of fighters myself. Like, well, oh, like, well it's, they're from my gym, you know. So I don't. It's not like I changed anything up. I'm still at the same gym that I grew up in, Beautiful. and they're still the same kids that go around, you know. So it's like this is just a normal thing. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Mm-hmm. And uh, so let our fans know you are four fights into your professional career. Yeah, yeah, four yeah. fights in four my fights career, in and then, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's go, I'm, I want to go over them, man, because, uh, you know, you are four fights in, and so let's take. Let's go back to Fresno, California for your pro debut. Uh, you were fighting Alan Melson. Uh, what was going through your mind, man? What were the emotions that you were feeling in your pro debut? You know, I honestly thought, like, my pro debut was going to be, like, just another fight. You know, I thought it was going to be completely normal. I fought in Fresno before. I, I, like, this is just going to be like an amateur tournament. And then I kind of get out there, and the crowd just started roaring. You know, oh, and yeah. Was like, yeah. Oh, it was loud. Like, oh, it was we were there. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. <laughs> and, and then, like, I get up, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm in a you're fight. The one, you're you know, the yeah. Right? I was like, okay. I was like, you know, oh, we're, gonna, we're here. We've trained hard. We've uh, worked hard for this. Let's, let's let it happen. But uh, it was nerve wracking, you know, and it was it was an experience that I'm glad I got to have under my way, under my belt in the first fight, and hopefully it doesn't come again. I got cut. Uh, I don't want to get cut again. You did right, you yeah, know? headbutt right. Yeah, headbutt. I was a headbutt in the in the first round, and it was weird because I went out there and we clashed heads a little bit, man. and his nose was already bleeding. So I was yeah. like, man, and I was like, this guy's bleeding a lot. And I took a step back and I was like, oh, it's, oh, it's me, it's man. It's like, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I commend you for for you know because a lot of fighters when they they first get cut they kind of freak out a little bit. They may you know they may you know wipe their glove at it or you know it just distracts them. But you kind of you know you you were composed. Uh, what were you thinking like you know once you you found out it was you that was bleeding? Well, I, I've been cut before okay. in the uh, in the amateurs, okay. you know, and okay. a lot of people say, oh, that's that's horrible for the people in the amateurs because they they'll reopen the pro. I think that if you handle your cuts properly and you take care of them the right way, mm-hmm. they won't come back. You know, so I've right. been able to have a couple cuts that, you know, I have that have right. never have reopened, reopened. and so, uh, but I know how to deal with them. And the the difference between the pro fights and the amateur fights is I would have a cut going into my next fight. Oh you know? yeah. So that mm-hmm. was a little different. Yeah. So I'm I'm thankful that the amateur boxing gave me that experience, and so I'm able to handle them in the pros. Beautifully. Mm-hmm. All right, Richard, let's go into your second professional belt. You fought Roberto Savala Jr. This one, man, you were doing your thing, and the referee stepped in a little too early for my liking. Does that frustrate you? You know, in the moment it did, uh, because I thought 
I was like, oh, I wanted to show everybody what I could do. Yeah, and of course. the first fight, it was like I w- I dropped them, but it was kind of weren't, they weren't clean drops. And yeah. then the second fight too, it stopped early, and I had like six week training camp, right. and before that, and I was like, man, I go back to my dad though, and my dad was like, no, he did his job. You know, you the were you were job. hitting the guy, and he goes, if it would have lasted any longer, then something bad could have happened. You know, and so I thought about it. I was like, yeah, and at least it showed off that my camp went well. You know, I, I was doing the things I needed to do. Yeah. And uh, I think my next fight after that kind of made sure that that ref knew he did a good job. You know? Right. And so on the <laughs> flip side of that token, let's go to your third fight uh, where you face Marco Antonio uh, Canedo. Mm-hmm. A brutal knockout. Viral went viral. Yeah. Um, you you scored like three, four unanswered punches while while he you know he went down. What was going through your mind, Richard? You know, I always thought I was going to be the guy that kind of rushed in and saved the guy if he was falling. I thought I would hit him one time and I'd see him falling and I'd catch him and I'd be like, oh, it's okay, you're better now. You know, I thought I was going to be the savior of the story. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. once I went out there and I was in that moment, I wasn't going to stop punching. And I wouldn't stop punching until the ref pulled me off when he did, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that it was a learning curve that I didn't understand about myself. You know, I am that guy that is vicious in the ring. Yeah, that killer instinct. You can't curve it while you're in battle, man. Exactly, but I, I, I didn't know I had it to that extent, but once I understood that I had it to that extent, I was able to accept it, and I'm okay with having that. Beautiful. I'm okay with being the guy that, no, you should be nervous to get in the ring with me. I'm okay with being that guy that says, no, you better make sure you have a good ref, because if not, I'm going to continue to punch. Right, yeah. and it's beautiful that you accept your killer instinct, because you know that chamber of truth There's no joke, man. You don't want to be the one receiving, you know, on the receiving end. Exactly. Because there'll be no mercy, man. So, yeah, I'm it perfectly said that, you know, you accepted it, and that's who you are, man. 100%. Powerful guy, Impressive. powerful guy. Yeah. Which turns us into your last bout. Or where you uh, won your fourth professional bout by knockout against Abnid Hefni. Uh, tell us about that fight. You know, I th- it kind of reminded me a little bit of my first fight is that mm. uh, in the sense that I was like, oh, it's going to be just another pro fight. We're going to be good. But then it was Madison Square Garden. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so That's and right. then everyone talks about it. You're in New York. You see the lights. There's everything going on. And I get in the ring. And I'm like, I'm going to go for it. And that's <laughs> what I did. You know, I went out there in the first about two rounds I just kind of started swinging and I was kind of right I wasn't doing what I needed to do I think I started selling in a little bit in my third round and I uh, was able to show a little bit better but yeah. overall it wasn't my best performance but it was, it was enough to get the job done and I know yeah. I have a lot to work on now and uh, that's that's what we're doing now yeah yeah perfectly said man and it's beautiful to hear from a fighter you know knowing that that you know they're gonna go back to the drawing board and you know they, they realize when it's not their best performance you know I personally in our last episode said that you kind of maybe uh, rushed your attack a little bit too much so where you kind of uh, smothered your own punches yeah. on the inside but you know it's a learning curve man you're only four and0 and we applaud you man I mean mm-hmm. you're only gonna get way better you know from now on which leads me to my next question Richard um, the trend nowadays, it seems to me, um, fighters want to get to the bag and they want to get to the title as fast as possible. Yeah. Kind of like a trend like Lomachenko started, you know what I'm uh-huh. saying? <laughs> um, for me, I wish, you know, just, you know, for my opinion, I wish you would, you know, you, you would maybe think of getting 25 to 30 fights before even challenging for a title bout. Title, title bout. What, is, what is Richard's plan? I mean, do you think you need that many fights or, how, or however many you think? Or what, what do you think? I am enjoying the process right, right. now. Yeah, That's what yeah. I'm doing. You know, I think everyone talks about what's in the future what's here man I'm a top ranked prospect that's 4-0 yeah. and I'm I'm living life to the fullest right now yeah, you know? yeah. and I'm super excited about that and on top of that one of the reasons I signed with top rank wasn't just because of the money or wasn't just because of ESPN it's because of the matchmakers you know and they and I, I'm a firm believer that they are going to move me in the right process yes. and that they, that needed to be done you know so like whatever they, however they want to move me I'm fine with being moved right, if that's right. a, a towel shot tomorrow let me have it if, okay, it's, if okay. it's a title shot down the line, I'm okay with that too. However, they want to see that plan because they're they're the ones that build the legacies. You know, yeah, yeah, they have that yeah. set in motion and they know what they're doing. I'm okay with letting them know what they're doing and trusting them in that process. Okay. Yeah. All right. Right on. That Chaz. Hey man, I uh, I noticed uh, following you and stuff on Instagram and uh, some of the stuff on YouTube. You uh, you have this like old school unconventional uh, type of training, man, <laughs> and it just gives us this good look for the valley. You know, I, I'm a huge supporter. Um, talking about you know you, you're out there you know lifting these bricks and these rocks and stuff. You know, where did that come from? Who inspired that? Uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, how that's benefited you? So my uh, my grandpa was a farmer, and so my dad worked on a farm growing up, and that was the the main inspiration behind this. My dad gives me that farm workouts. And my dad gets that inspiration from guys like Joe Lewis, Joe Frazier, mm. you know, mm. like the Rocky Marciano. Yeah. Like Joe Frazier, he said he got that, that hook from uh, from the saw. 
you know, his dad had one side of the saw and he had to use his other, he had to use his left hand because that's the way the saw worked. And that's the only reason he was able to hone Get in that, that power. power. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so my dad will give me some farm workouts on non, on the non-farm. Like I'll be by the boxing club. My dad will make me dig a hole, fill it with a wheelbarrow, run around the soccer field, fill the hole back up, and then do it again. You know, wow. like, labor work. Yeah, yeah, so he has to do a lot of labor work. And I think that, in a sense, kind of grounds me too. You know, like I'm not the guy that's going out and doing like the, the most high tech stuff, but I'm the guy that's that's I have my roots still. You know, I have yeah, my roots in the right, valley. It's ingrained in and, you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's not just ingrained in me, but it's ingrained in my training. Right on, man. I noticed in some of your fights, you you come at these guys fast, man, and it's it's just uh, really entertaining to watch. Oh, and yeah. and you know, you almost smother these guys with punches, you know, creating them to, to make a make an error, you know, and then you land that knockout shot. Would you say that that type of training's benefited you uh, to kind of set up those power shots on your opponents? Oh, 100 percent. Like, so I, I'd say my power shots are coming flurries, and I have more of a pop than a, a thud. You know, a lot of these heavyweights they kind of have a, a thud, thud. And, and and it works for them. You know, like they get that one shot hitter quitter. I don't want to have that one shot hitter quitter I want to have three four punches that are going to dazzle and, and then kind of put you out I think that the biggest thing about my power is my conditioning because I could punch as hard as I do in the first round in the 12th round you yeah, know? And, oh, that's and that's what I really pride mm-hmm. myself on is mm-hmm. one time I was at a silver glove tournament I lost the I lost this uh at states at silver mm-hmm. gloves and I lost because I was unconditioned and oh, from that man. point forward I made sure I was never going to be unconditioned to fight again yes. and, and that's things you learn at tournaments like this right. you know you learn about what you want and what you don't want and you have lessons that last a lifetime that's awesome, man. Thank you for sharing that. I'll turn it over to my partner here, Neighborhood Hero. Hey, Richard, a huge fan here, man. Uh, you're just a, a hometown hero. I love the way you represent the Valley. You know, everybody in the Valley loves you, you know, and pretty much you're representing everybody in the Valley. You know, you're like just the celebrity of the Valley right now. How do you take on that role, Richard? You know, it's, I grew up in a very small town of Tulare. Yeah. I mean, everyone here grew up in a small town. We're in oh, Central yeah. Valley, but like, you know, Tulare is a relatively small town and everybody knew my dad. So if I ever did something wrong, it got reported to my dad. You know, so I think it's kind of like that, but on a bigger scale. You know, it's like I was, I'm still living in a fishbowl, but like now I can't go to another town and mess around. Like they're gonna know me too. Right. Yeah. So like I, I kind of take in that, that same sense. Like everyone's kind of watching you and everyone's kind of knowing what you do. So just be careful what you say, be careful what you do, because you're not just representing yourself, you're representing a family, a town, and a community now. And I'm okay with doing that. And on top of that, I mean, my friends used to always ask me, like, oh, what's up? Uh, how's it feel to handle all that pressure, you know, being the guy, being this, being that? You know, isn't it a lot of pressure if you lose? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. say, yeah. You know, someone's going to be like, oh, no, I didn't, like, I don't see this pressure. No, there's pressure along with this, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I'm okay with that, you know? Like, you kind of, it's... Being able to handle that pressure, it almost feels good in a sense. Like after you get that tournament, after you get that fight done and you win, you're like, man, I handled that. And yeah, then you got to yeah. rest, recover, mm-hmm. and plan for the next one. But there's a lot of pressure involved, but I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it because pressure does make diamonds, right? Yeah, 100%. exactly, man. Well said. You know what I mean? Uh, like I said, we're huge fans, Richard. We're going to continue to support you. And Thank it's you. just awesome how you're supporting this event. I you know what I mean? That. Most people, you know, like... They kind of leave home, yeah. and you're yeah. still right at home, and that's just an inspiration to me. I'm sure that's an inspiration to everybody here, and I just applaud you for that. And I want to say thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm the same guy, you know, and I, mm-hmm. I really want to be able to just stay that way because, like, I'm, I'm really thankful to have a foundation like my dad and my my friends that kind of keep me humble. But I mean, this is who I am. I'm the guy that's going to come out and, and yeah. support the people at mm-hmm. Silver Gloves. Yes, I have some fighters here, but I mean these. These are my guys still, yes, you know, yeah, every, yeah. these are my friends. These are the guys I train with. These are the guys I work out with. I mean, how can I not come to support, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Well said. Awesome, Richard. Uh, so going back to your career, uh, what's next, man? Do you have a fight lined up or what's a timetable for, for you to get back in the ring? So the estimated fight, I think they gave me is around February. So I think okay, I'm done for year. the year. Okay, uh, yep. But I, I want to keep fighting. I like fighting a lot. I like being active. Um, I like keeping yeah. my face out there. I like... I like staying hungry, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. and uh, boxing, uh, boxing often does that for me. So I'm gonna, I'm hopefully hoping next year, I'm hoping to get maybe like five to six fights again. Wow. You know, I, I really want to yeah. stay active. I want to yeah. stay yeah, busy. Wanna I want to do it. Yeah, yeah, and, and that'll only benefit your career 100. Uh, percent Just a, some more questions, if you don't mind, Richard. Um, looking up to you know the heavyweight division, who are some some maybe past heavyweights or uh, that you that you looked up to? I looked up to uh, guys like Joe Frazier a lot growing up. You know, I 
Joe Frazier, he won the gold in Tokyo uh, in 19, I, like, what was it, 60-something? Something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he was always one of my inspirations, and to be able to go to go there and uh, and kind of go to Tokyo as well, that was right. pretty well, that's cool. right. Yeah. yeah you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so he was always one of my inspirations, but also... I like the Klitschko's. I, I yep. mean, everyone says like they're they're bad for boxing or something. They no. they were renowned for years, years. man. They they stayed on top, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. And uh, even when I was a little kid, I used to be tall for my weight division. I'm not tall anymore for my weight <laughs> division. I used to be, yep. and they call me Baby Klitschko because I really like that step back left hand, right, yeah. Yeah. you know. So uh, I I I love how the Klitschko's fight and. Uh, I, I'm a fan of Fury too. Fury, Usyk, the, the top guys right now. There you go. I'm a fan of everybody, honestly. I'm a fan of Fury of uh, Fury's feints. How he right. how he just kind of establishes dominance in the ring. Right, being six nine to boot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. movement, the exactly. feints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then it's Usyk, amazing. his movement. Usyk's movement his is just phenomenal. Is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like I have a lot of of things I try to implement in mine, and they're all from little. They're all from a little bit of different characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah well nice, said. Well nice. said. Um, yeah, that's that's great, Richard. Um, now, do you foresee when, you, like, so when he when he challenges you for a title, I, I'm assuming those those names that you mentioned will probably be on their way out, and I think I think you'll be on on a track to face like a Frank Sanchez or other other uh, you know up and coming heavyweights. Do you do you kind of foresee like who you might be? You know, maybe fighting in the near future as you gain that experience. You know, in the near future, I'm not too familiar. I'm not too or sure Jared who I'm going to be fighting with. I mean, I, I see these guys, right? And I yeah. do think that one day there'll be a good fight. But right. I wouldn't say necessarily I'm planning for the fight. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, right now I'm really working on just making myself a better fighter as opposed to going out and saying, mm -hmm. I want to do something to beat this guy. Beautiful. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. so right now it's things like defense. That's a big thing I really want to work on. My hands staying up, my elbows in, mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of calming down a little bit in that first part of the ring. Yeah, yeah. awesome, awesome. Nice, nice. Over here, Ryan Reels. Ah, just a pleasure, man. Again, thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah. man, I'm just a huge fan, Richard. <laughs> thank you, <laughs> That chance. You know what, I have another question, man. If you could go back in time, you know, and, and coming up, you know, like this, uh, like uh, these kids are today, um, and get to the point where you are now, is there a message that you would like to give these kids that maybe you didn't have uh, that was given to you, you know, coming up? I would say it'll come. You know, and my dad, my dad was able to tell me that, but I didn't understand it. You know, I used to be in the gym. It was only me and my dad. It'd be 10 o'clock at night. I wouldn't be able to do anything like for New Year's or for Thanksgiving because I had a fight coming up because all the fights are always in the new year, you know? So you never have any of those, those late uh, holidays to be able to celebrate. And I would think to myself, I'd tell my pops, what, what are we doing this for? Why are we doing this? Nothing's happened. It's been four years and I like, I've had like, Three, four fights and I can't do anything. What, what's going on? I mean, I would just be like, it'll come, it'll come, it'll come. Then one day, boom, it just happened. You know, I won, yeah. I won Golden Gloves and I, I, I went overseas. I, I was able to fight for the Pan American Games. I was able to go to the Olympics. And I look at my dad, I was like, Pops, this all happened like that. And I was like, no, 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 no. Like, it, it came, you know, you had to yeah. sacrifice and dedicate yourself. So it will take some time, but know that they're the things you're doing now are worth it and it will be worth it at the end you know so stay dedicated stay focused have fun while you're doing it and it'll come thanks man i appreciate you sharing that message yeah and hopefully I, our, our younger uh, generations you know that they they'll take that and, and they'll hear it out you know so they they know even on those those nights and days where they feel like hey what am i doing this for exactly nah, keep, man. keep it up man you guys yeah. you guys will we'll right that day. was a beautiful message from the one and only richard torres jr Guys, uh, youth, uh, keep it up, guys. It will happen. That you know, he's living proof here. Uh, Richard Torres, anything else you want to add uh, to your fans or, or uh, anything you would like to add? I just want to say thank you to everybody. You know, the getting the Olympic medal and doing all this pro stuff is cool, but it, it feels like just another day. What what really makes a difference and what really makes me feel special sometimes is the people that help show their support. You know, the people that call me and tell me like, hey, thank you, Richard. Like, and you're doing, all, you're on the right track. You know, someone told me, what, like, how did it feel to get an Olympic medal? I said, you know how it feels to turn 18 and nothing changes? felt just like that. I thought I was going to have this enlightening. Nothing ever happened. But I got home, and my town threw a parade for me. I got home, and my town gave me a key to the city. I got home, mm -hmm. and everyone made me feel so special. That's where it makes you really feel like an Olympian. So thank you guys for all your yeah. support, because it really makes all the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to continue to support me, you can follow me at the Richard Torres on Instagram. <laughs> there <laughs> you go, guys. Plug in there. But yeah, thank mm -hmm. you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Richard Torres. Thank, thank you for coming on uh, to the DL Boxing Podcast. Uh, we are inspired uh, mm -hmm. to see someone like you, you know, inspiring our young youth here at the Silver Gloves uh, Tournament. Uh, I'm sure they, they look up to you, and uh, we will continue watching you, man, and all yeah. the best of luck, man. Let's keep yep. it going. I'm excited. Right. Thank you so much, Richard. Right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Thank you so much, man. 
All right, guys, and we're back here at the Silver Gloves Tournament. Yeah. Uh, what a nice uh, uh, conversation with Richard Torres Jr., right? Yeah, that yeah. was awesome. That was awesome. Man. Yeah, we greatly appreciate that. But guess what, guys? We are honored to have another guest on our show, uh, another fighter from the Valley. Mm -hmm. Let me introduce him. Fighting out of the blue corner. Weighing in at a trim and ready 135 pounds with a professional record of eight wins, no losses, six big wins by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Castro. What's up, Mark? What's up, Mark? Hey, what's up, Mark? How are you doing? Welcome, 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 man. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. So, feeling homie here. Cool, man. So, how you feeling, Mark? Feeling good. Uh, came to support the local talent here. Yeah, so tell yeah. us about that. What does it mean to you to support the, the, the youth, the amateur, where you come from, right? Uh, you know, cool. starting from amateur as a kid. And uh, what does it mean to you to, to uh, you know, give back to the community? Well, honestly, it means the world to me uh, to come and uh, help support and uh, also help the kids from my gym. Uh, they see me work hard and then they see, they see me on fighting on the biggest stages right. and then also as well like for me I needed that younger role model so I'm being that also beautiful nice. yeah and, and being the younger role model um, that must feel good inside yeah. to, to be yeah. that person right because everybody when they're young they, they, they want to have that, that support from someone they look up to man and yeah. I'm sure these kids are getting that from you excellent man um, so you know you are 8-0 and six knockouts you've had a, 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 a Great start to your career, your pro career. Yes. Uh, your last fight, you fought Kevin Montiel. You had a devastating knockout via uppercut. Can you tell us about that that viral knockout? That that, that was just sweet. Um, it was so insane. Uh, for that for that fight, I, I felt like super locked in. I felt the best I've ever felt. Um, on top of that, I was just zoned in the whole uh, after wins. Uh, uh, I just was zoned in, and even after the fight or during the fight, I was just zoned in with my dad. And it just fell on row after it happened. And even after it happened, I was just kind of like like enjoying the moment, but at the same time, it's like, this is what hard work can do. Yeah, right, and that hard work pays off. Now, uh, tell our fans, like like some, like some a knockout shot like that, do you, do you, are you thinking like, oh, maybe you know an uppercut will get it done, or is it just a spur of the moment while you're fighting? Um, well, I was just kind of in the zone. Uh, my dad, I, my dad, two people actually told me like at the same time, throw the uppercut. And okay. I was like, all right, let's throw the uppercut. The trainers, right? Let's throw it. And I didn't think it was going to land. I didn't think anything of it. And mm -hmm. we got the knockout. So we got that, the big knockout. Yeah. It was, it was the, insane. It was, it was awesome, man. We, you know, we were on our feet as we watched on TV. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It was, it was very awesome. That's beautiful, um, man. That chance. Oh, you know what, man? I'm just a big fan of watching you in your fights. You know, like ever since uh, I started watching you, like I, I noticed that you uh, you're on the undercards of Canelo, man. How does that feel? Uh, it feels unreal. Honestly, uh, I thank God for all the opportunities he gave gave me. Um, and like I looked up to Canelo. Canelo actually made me. I used to have a passion for boxing, but I just created. I got an obsession after. Right. Uh, obsession with it after because. Um, I seen him train, I seen that he has fun with it, and I'm like, I could be here too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then being on his undercard, that's just like a cherry on top. Oh, nice, man. Right. Right. That's amazing, awesome. amazing exposure. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, neighborhood hero Ryan Reels. Hey, Mark, I have I'm little Marcus. ones, man, yeah. and uh, they're around three, four years old, and I was reading that you started actually boxing or training at four years old. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Like, how did you start boxing at that uh, young my, of age? My dad has a, a huge love for boxing. Uh, he had his own boxing gym at the, when I was, before I was born, I think Tuan, yeah, he was already a trainer, mm -hmm. and then he eventually had his own gym, and he was a dad, so like he'll bring us to the gym. Yeah, wanted to teach us self defense. He never intended for me to be a boxer. Um, it was kind of we all did it as a family. Have three sisters. Mm -hmm. He wanted them to learn self defense, and then me, I was always at the gym because I wanted to be with my dad. And then eventually, being at the gym just kind of like it started with like me hitting the bag, hitting the mitts, sparring kids at four years old. Like just, wow. just taking it all in, and eventually it's. I just had a, a huge IQ for it. Yeah, and yeah. Nice. Eventually, my dad didn't want me to become a boxer, but it kind of grew into that because I wanted to start boxing. And then eventually we entered a tournament. The first tournament was actually silver gloves, and went all the way to nationals with like four wow. fights. Wow. Yes. Nice. And speaking of IQ, um, I noticed you have a great IQ outside of the ring. You were a valedictorian for your high school, man. Wow. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, my mom's uh, my mom works in a school, so she okay. always been on top of me for school. I actually have like 
I have an older sister. She's like, she was a valedictorian in her school. So it's kind of like, all right, I gotta like, this is oh, the right? like, yeah, it's nah, that's not, not, yeah, it's firing, <laughs> but this is this is the the bar that's set for the family. So it's kind of like I need to do the same thing because I'm like I look up to my sister, so I need to do the same. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Um, it seems like you got great parents. I mean, it always takes great parents to push you, you know, as far as you can go, right? Yeah. Um, so you always had that 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 support behind you, right? Yeah. Uh, my parents have always been uh, my biggest supporters. Uh, now looking at it. Um, they treat any tournament, like whether it's Silver Glove, whether it's like National, uh, Junior Olympics, anything, they treat it, they have treated it the same, took it serious the whole time, the preparation was the same, and now like it's still the same, and that's what I love about it because they've always taken it serious, I've taken it serious, and their support is amazing because it's kind of like we all think back on times, I all remember how things used to be, like we didn't have that much money, or we didn't like this or like that. And it's just amazing to grow from that and then and grow in a stronger bond. Right, right bond, yeah. yeah. The, the boxing bond of you guys and you know yeah. the, the hard work and the success that you had, you know, you guys you guys are aware of it and you guys, you know, come closer I assume yeah. from, from it. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's beautiful, um, man. Like God had like given me this talent to like keep my family together. And wow. it's a passion for all of us. Nice, so, awesome, man. Bad chance. And you know what I have a question, man. You know, you coming up from a youngster to the point you're a professional now. You know, was there any of those days where you just felt like, man, what am I doing this for? And is there a message that you might be able to give to some of these young kids, this this younger generation that are here fighting today? You know, is there something that you could give them that maybe you didn't have then? Um, yeah, there's there's always those days um, that you like. I remember, like last year, uh, after my grandma had passed away, I was going. It was really tough for the family. It's hard. You start questioning. Like everything just becomes super harder. Um, you actually want to show it to the gym. You still do it, but like you don't have that. That like the drive, the drive. Maybe the, at the moment, yeah. Yeah, kind of like everything like seems like oh nothing's moving, nothing's happening no more. But for the kids that are feeling that way, I just like to say that just always uh, believe in yourself. Like even if things feel like they ain't going anywhere, just keep going and like do in your power. Don't do anything dumb. Um, don't go into drugs or alcohol. Like that's gonna Beautiful. it's a shortcut. You need to face your feelings. Don't run from them and then. Do do something really good with them. Oh, whether it's reading, whether it's but don't don't waste your talent. Don't waste God's talent. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Ryan Rios, do you have anything else to add to Mr. Mark Castro? Yeah, it's funny because uh, Mark has this thing he does in training where he puts a kettlebell on a rope and he swings it yeah. and he dodges and he oh, he's yeah. blindfolded too, right? <laughs> and I don't know if you have earplugs or not, yeah. but for some reason he right before it comes he he dodges and he moves and I've tried that but yeah. with a with a softball yeah. and I get tagged more times than I dodge it yeah. so how the heck do you hear it do you see it how do you know when it's coming uh, man well like the kettlebell I practice with a sandbag and it's heavy so oh, okay. the kettlebell just for the video so you think oh. people think that I practice with it all the time <laughs> but the sandbags are like 10 15 pounds yeah, right. you, the sandbags only coming back and forth um, like you feel something like if something's gonna touch you or like really you just like a sense I, yeah. I imagine yeah, yeah like you, you, you feel this like <laughs> yeah. you're gonna feel something <laughs> but like you're, you're training for it so it's like uh -huh. you throw it you know it's coming you dip dodge like uh -huh. it's kind of the same as bobbing and weaving yeah. coming under the yeah. yeah, that's a great question because we do see that in the ring with you, where, where there yeah. was a fight where you made the the guy like miss like all his shots, yeah. right? And, and how does that feel, man? Like like when you see when you, when you see it translate from the gym to to the ring, you know what I'm saying? It feels like, amazing. Um, a while after like so like um, a matrix or something. Else. Well, like after the fight, when you see the highlights, you're like, oh, that that's that's nice. Like, yeah. And right. then then people put up highlights videos together, you're like, oh shoot, like right. they yeah. make you seem like it's it's awesome. Yeah. After you seeing your own highlights, you're like. And then the kids see the highlights, and right. they're, yeah, they're they like, remember. They're like like you bring it wow. up, you're like, oh shit! Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, right. They remember. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it is, Mark. Uh, so your near future, um, you're a very, very uh, supported uh, boxer in here in the valley. Um, do you have plans to, to 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 come to like Fresno and sell out an arena? Um, my 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 dream, my goal. Um, my dream is goal is to fight here in uh well fight in Fresno at a at Bulldog Stadium. Yeah. Beautiful. For Fresno State place. Yeah, yeah and, and, and do you have any timetable for that? Or, or, uh, or maybe after you get a certain more fights in or, or, or what's I, the plan? I feel like in under two to three years it should happen. 
yeah. mm-hmm. sell out. It's going to sell there. out, brother. Um, I think it fits 44,000, 40, 40, something like wow. that. You know what? I love yeah. that answer because you're not rushing things, man. Yeah. I, like, I, like I told Torres um, yeah. earlier in our interview, I, I told him, you know, it seems like the trend right now is a, a lot of the fighters, they want to get to the bag. They want to get to the title as fast as they can. Like, I see a lot of, like, fighters, like, with 15 fights and less, you know, trying to, you know, challenge for a world title. And I'm from the, you know, I've watched boxing a lot, you know, since the 90s, 80s. Um, where you had uh, contenders actually become contenders and they had like 20, 30, maybe even 40 fights before they even challenged for a title. Uh, are you on a fast track or are you mindful knowing that, you know what, I'll only take a title shot when I feel I'm ready, like maybe with 20 fights? Well, honestly, like, I I want to say, just want to say that I'm in the gym all the time. Right. I just want to say, um, uh, whenever my team and us, we feel right. we all feel like it's the right time. Cause it, it could be like maybe like one one person doesn't feel like it's the right time. Okay, why? We we'll go over that and then we address that. But at the same time, like we're gonna we're gonna go when the time is right because yeah. the world titles are gonna be there when we get yeah, there. Exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. once we get there, you can't come back down. Yeah. Right, you right. Once you start, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no turning back. From you it. can't miss a step on the, like a ladder to ladder. success. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah beautifully said. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Um, any word on your next fight, Mark? Uh, my next fight will be December 3rd. Oh, uh, nice. Oh. Chocolatito Estrada. Oh, oh my nice. Goodness. In Mexico, wow. right? Wow. No, they, it's in Glendale, Arizona. Oh, okay. 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 The third, wow, that's awesome, wow. man. Congratulations. So, Thank uh, you. You're in training camp. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. training for yeah, like, well, since yeah. my last fight. I already, <laughs> I already knew I was going to fight on this card, so I was, uh-huh. I was in the gym already. That's awesome. Do you know who your opponent is yet? Uh, or? No, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. Now, speaking of opponents, do you do you uh, uh, watch video on your opponents, or, or do, you, do you let your your your, uh, uh, your coaches do that for my, you? My dad. My dad. Yeah, my dad's dad, the, the mastermind of all. Yeah, yeah. right. He's right. the one that, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and... I just right, follow, follow, follow yeah. the because the, 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 at the at the same time I just know that I have to be the best version of me. Mm-hmm. When, yeah. Once I'm that, um, everything handles itself because you never know. Last minute opponent changes uh, can mess up, not mess up, but you need to be prepared. Yeah, have you ever had last minute replacements? Yeah, for already. My man. second fight. Oh man, how did that feel, man? Because that's kind of dangerous. Uh, Sometimes you know it, it was not it was uh, it was uh, like they flew him in. The day, uh, the day of the weigh-ins, they weighed him in like over FaceTime, so like we knew it was wow. yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's he was a it was a good he was a good uh, little he fought in the UFC. Like, oh, okay. So, okay. So, the uh, MMA fighter. Yeah, yeah, he was in the he fought for a UFC title for a couple of times, oh, wow. so he was pretty up there. Right, right. Yeah. And when I fought him, I got like a second round knockout. Oh, nice, beautiful. Nice. Yeah, so it was nice, good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that must have felt good, yeah. man. Um, yeah. Uh, so. Any last message or anything you want to add uh, to let your fans know? Thank you. I appreciate all the support. Uh, we're going to keep working hard. We're going to the top and we ain't stopping. Yeah, check out his fight December 3rd mm-hmm. on the undercard of Chocolatito versus Estrada. Uh, we didn't know, man, so thanks for letting yeah, us know that, that we're going to yeah. be even there I, sooner. I, I, right? I haven't there. announced it yet, but yeah, it's fine. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, exclusive on the DL Boxing Podcast. Yeah. Don't miss Mark Castro from Fresno, California, guys. Uh, he's only up is, 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 is the way he's going to go, and we're there for the ride. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thanks, thank man. Appreciate it. it. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for your time, bro. Awesome. Appreciate it, man. All right. All the best. Peace out, man. Okay. All right. All right. Support. Thanks. All right, guys. Well, that was a great interview with Mark the Shark uh, Castro. Yep. Um, great kid. Smart kid. Smart kid. A lot uh, of talent. An inspiration to the kids, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, man. But you know what? The day wouldn't be uh, uh, complete without interviewing one of the youth, one of the amateurs that represents the Silver Gloves tournament, right? Right. So for you guys, we got another interviewee. Let me introduce him. He is a national champion, 17 years young, weighing in at 119 pounds. From Fresno, California, ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Fuentes. Hey, man, what's up? What's up, Jordan? What's up, Jordan? How you doing, man? Good to see you, brother. How are you? Welcome. Hey, Welcome. thank you so much for joining us here at the DL Boxing Podcast. How are you feeling today, man? Doing all right. Feeling really good? Yeah, just reach yeah. up here to the mic. Awesome, man. So uh, I hear you're a national champion, man. Uh, tell tell our, uh, our audience uh, a little bit about you, man. Yeah, I'm Jordan Fuentes, 17. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, tell us, uh, what age did you start boxing? Did you say ten? Or is that or eight? Eight years old. Okay. Wow. So. Uh, were uh, it was your did your dad get you into the sport or who? Yeah. Was it? So there's like a playground where I play two ball at, and they have they have a boxing arena. My dad was like, "You guys want to try boxing?" And we were like, "Yeah." But I was five at the time. And my dad knew the coach, so we went. And the coach was like, "You got to be eight years old to uh, to box there." So we came back two years later. And came out of the wow, that's awesome. awesome man. That's awesome, uh, Bad Chaz. Oh, you know what, man? That's pretty cool. So. What, what made you uh, pick boxing over any other sport, you know? Like, what, what gives you that that uh, that thrill, or is it the win? Is it yeah, the... Yeah, yeah, I, I like, I just like to fight, you know, and uh, oh, okay. it's fun. All right. You like to fight, and you gotta like it, right? You gotta, <laughs> love, you gotta love the training as yeah. well, right? It's, it's something you're into. Uh, Jordan, uh, what does it mean to, to be here supporting, uh, you know, the Silver Gloves Tournament and seeing these youth? Uh, how, how's it feel? It's good, it's a good experience. I like watching the kids fight, you know, like, I got, I like, I like hanging around with all the, the little kids. Right, right. Uh, all the kids that hang around with are like 11, 8. They're the fun slap box with them and stuff. It's yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure it reminds you a little bit of your youth, yeah. right? You yeah. said you started out at 8 years old, yes, so you were in these tournaments that, yeah, young, right? Or, you know. Wow, that's, that's do you, amazing. Uh, do you have any uh, favorite fighters uh, uh, in the past or currently? Like, who yeah. do you look up to, man? Right now, my favorite fighter is uh, oh, Okay. Oh, right on. Speaking of Shakur, he's a he's a southpaw. What, yeah. what, what, what's your style? Are you orthodox or, or? I'm southpaw? Okay. Nice man. Okay. Well, speaking of southpaw, uh, we heard that you were orthodox for a while. Yeah. Tell us that story, man. How, yeah. What made you switch? Like the first four years, I was a uh, I was uh, orthodox. Wow, four years. Yeah. I'd go to the tournaments. You know, I'd do good still. Go to like I'd get past the the central, then go to like state. And I wouldn't make it past state, and then I'd get falling the line. And my dad was like, let's try Southpaw. And I was like, okay. And then my first tournament, I went Southpaw. I made it all the way and won the national. So, uh, wow. So, so you adjusted fast. It felt, it felt natural. That's amazing. That's amazing, man. Because, you know, you take a fighter, you're orthodox, and you make a switch Southpaw, they, they're lost. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They're lost. Yeah. Neighborhood here, Ryan Reels. Yeah, man, you must have great feet. You know what I mean? To be able to do that, right. it takes a, a smart kid and uh, somebody with great... Well balanced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but what are some of the future plans you have? Um, my next tournament's in December in uh, Texas. It's called uh, the Western Qualifiers. If you make it, you get on the USA team. Oh, so wow. you make it, you get on the USA team. Yeah. And this is in Texas, you said? Texas. Wow. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that is. That is great. Uh, where do you train at them, man? Uh, I just train in my garage. Nice. Nothing wrong with that, man. Nothing wrong. With that. That's that's where we all train, you know. Yeah. We all, we all, you know, we, we make a spot where we we, we put in all the hard work, right? Yeah. And that's what counts, right? Uh, the hard work and then showing up for the fight yeah. and seeing the results from that hard work, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad chance. Is there any kind of message you'd like to give to these youngsters today? You know, that might might get you know them a little inspiration to kind of follow in your footsteps. Yeah, just, just stay with it and just keep training hard, you know, and it'll come and eventually come. Right, right. Just stay with it. Oh, okay, cool, man. What's, what's your favorite type of training, you know? Like, what, what do you feel like you value the most uh, when you get in pre preparation for a fight? You know, is it the heavy bag, the speed bag? Is there one thing that, you know, you like to, the, you know, focus on the most? The, the double end bag, the, um, like, the one that's, like, a small ball. Is, oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Top and bottom right, it's like yeah. reflex, yeah. like, kind of like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, excellent. Um, Neighbor here, Ryan Rios. You know what, when you see the likes of like uh, Richard Torres and you see the likes of Mark Castro, you know, still supporting, yeah. um, does that give you like hopes or, or just like um, inspiration to continue and, and kind of do what they're doing? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're both doing good and pros and right. they're undefeated. And, yeah, and I like looking up to them. You know? Do you yeah, remember man. seeing them when you were a kid? Do you remember watching them yeah, when they were in amateurs? watching them in amateurs. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, that's man. awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah, and what does it feel to see? What does it feel to see them here? I mean, like you know, this stuff, like do you see foresee yourself? You know, once you once you say you turn professional, you know, you yeah. give back to the community, yeah. something right, to, like a, like an example, right? Yeah, them watching like it's a good experience, and uh, uh, they've been doing it for a while too, right? Like they just want to be like. Yeah, and speaking of your of your uh, near future, if you win this next tournament, uh, is the Olympics in your in your near yeah. in sight? Yeah, I want to go to the 2024 Olympics and try to, try to make it, you know, try to win it. Wow. Nice, man. Wow. Yeah, man. that's awesome. Hey, that, that's a goal that you will attain. Just, yeah. uh, you know, keep, mm -hmm. your, keep your, you know, your focus in check, train hard. And, man, it, it, those, 
you know, your dreams will come true, man. Um, anything else you guys want to add? You know what? I'm Are looking you, forward to seeing you in the Olympics, man. Yeah, man. Uh, if it's in LA, I'll definitely be there and I'll be rooting for you, man. Yeah. You know what, man? I just want to, you know, recall what he said. You know, you, you have our, our support and our love. You know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're all from the Central Valley and, and we got your back, brother. So uh, any questions, any support you need, you know, just hit up the DL Boxing Podcast and we'll be there to support you. And our fans, you know, get to know Jordan. Follow him on Instagram. You want to let you know uh, where the fans, they can follow you and keep up with your fights. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, uh, Nice. Okay, cool, man. Appreciate you having on. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. Hey, thank you very much, Jordan. I wish you all the best, man. Okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you. That was fun uh, talking to uh, Jordan Fuentes. Yeah, man. What a nice kid, man. He has his uh, eyes uh, yeah. set on the prize. Yes. Right? Yes. He has that focus, and yeah. we wish him all the best. Right? Bright future. Yeah, bright future. Yeah. All right, guys. So let's do our thing. Let's recap the fights that happened, uh, well, yesterday, right? Yeah. Saturdays. <laughs> uh, let's start with the zone card in Abu Dhabi. We had Ricky Hatton's son, Campbell Hatton, return to the ring versus Dennis Bardos. Mm -hmm. He scored a devastating first-round knockout with a beautiful left hook to the body, yeah. guys. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, I heard, when I was watching him, and I heard it, I was like, oh, wow. Yeah, it sounded like yeah. a gunshot, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> And they were here, Ryan Reels. What do you think oh, about that, man? man? That was just paralyzing, man. Right. We seen that shot, and it was like he couldn't do nothing but like curl up in a ball. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, uh, what do you do when you get hit like that? What, how do you, how do you, uh, you know, recover from a shot like that? Right, right, right. That chance. Says, oh man, like you said, when you heard a hit, it was just like like a gunshot. I seen the same thing, and it was just like, man, how do you right. get up from that? Like. You know, right? Because when you hit hit right on the spot, I mean, yeah. that's that's like ninety nine percent chance that you're not getting up. Yeah. Right? It takes the air out of you. Yeah. Oh man, like like impressive. It's, yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Campbell improves to nine and zero. Uh, his father, Ricky Hatton. Uh, big shoes to fill, right? I mean, yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how he continues in his career. We'll, we'll, we'll be there to watch it. All right, guys. Moving on to the co-main event. We have Chantel Cameron take on Jessica McCaskill for the undisputed, uh, I believe it was the uh, super lightweight, 140 yeah. uh, title. Mm -hmm. Cameron scored a unanimous decision over McCaskill. Bad Chaz, tell us how it went down. Oh, you man. know what? I think I think uh, she deserved that, uh, that victory, man. Watching McCaskill, she just kind of seemed... Um, like she was in her traditional self, you know. I, I kind of expected her to, uh, to throw some cleaner, straighter punches, um, but I mean, they just kind of seemed, you know, wide and uh, just kind of left herself a little vulnerable throughout that fight. Yeah, man, it was it was crazy to see like she like regressed or or she just had an off night. It seemed like right. like McCaskill didn't bring the skill. Yeah, right here, right real. You know what? I know she's a commentator, and I wish you know she would have practiced what she preaches a little more. Right. And uh, she, didn't, she didn't look very disciplined to me. You know, I'm sure she went in there with a the game plan, and, and right. it went out the window fast because, um, I mean, she just, like I said, went for those haymakers and wanted to land that one shot. And yeah. a lot of times, man, you know, if somebody's looking for that one shot, you're not going to get it. Yeah, yeah have right. Arsenal. Especially that wild and that. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, she just wasn't yeah. wasn't in tune with uh, with anything that night. Yeah. Uh, which brings yeah. me to, really quick, just to to that I remembered uh, these these fights were taking place like at one a.m. You know, their Ooh, time. Really? I don't know if yeah. maybe it's an acclamation thing, but they should have known, right? I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. Like the, well, our next fight, which we're going to talk about, which I guess we'll get into it. The main event from the zone, we had Dimitri Bivol just dismantle Gilberto Surdo Ramirez over twelve rounds. Earning a unanimous decision, guys. Bad Chaz, what you think? Oh, you know what, man? I, I just had high hopes for watching Zoto. Uh, I thought, you know, he's gonna, he's gonna give him a, you know, a complicate him, you know. But uh, Bivol, man, he just seemed tough. Like, yeah. I just, uh, wow, hats off to him. You know, when it seemed like uh, Zoto was going in there and you know trying to be aggressive and uh, get him uh, cornered and up against the ropes, it just seemed like it wasn't even affecting or phasing. Uh, Bivol. Bivol it was just like he was punching bricks, man, and it just seemed like, all right, I'll let you have your, your time, you know, with me, but then it just seemed like Bivol would just come back and just lay it on him, and it just, I don't know, what you see, man? Uh, well, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, uh, what'd you think of Bivol's skills, man, the boxing skills? Yeah, man, it was just unmatched, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I was a uh, team uh, Zuru all the way, yeah, so, we uh, 
you know, you you lose as a team, you win as a team. Absolutely. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, no uh, you know, it, it was a hard fight to watch because I felt like, you know, uh, I'd like to see, uh, you know, uh, Zuro step up his game a little bit more. I wish he had a plan B and it was always just he was stuck on that plan A. And uh, Bevel, you know, totally adapted to what he, you know, yeah. brought. It took him a couple rounds, but uh, Bevel just never let off the gas once he kind of figured out, you yeah. know, uh, his game plan. So um, it was just hard to watch for me. And, uh, and you know, I was bummed out again, you yeah. know, with another uh, right. loss. Right, yeah. Uh, credit Bevel, his boxing skills really, really showed the next level that he was, you know, uh, as far as skill-wise compared to Zerto. Mm -hmm. You know, this game, this is a game of levels, and Bivol yeah. clearly showed that he was on another level than mm -hmm. Zerto at this time. Uh, yeah, the lack of uh, game plan B for Zerto is what really disappointed me. Um, it seemed like his corner really didn't give him any uh, specific real advice. instructions. Yeah, specific instructions. Yeah. I think that let him down a little bit. But like I said, they're a team, and I'm sure they're going to go back to the drawing board and see, you know, what went wrong. Uh, Surlo needs to assess, you know, the the, the regimen around him. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Vanchez? Yeah, I agree with you. You know what I mean? Some specific instructions probably would have been yeah. a little better, you know, right. to kind of coach your fighter through the, the rest of the fight, you know, be, to make those mm -hmm. adjustments. And um, it all could be experience, too, right? Tr true, true. I mean, yeah. right? When we don't have the experience, you know, it'll show, especially, you know, on TV, you know, when the yeah. spotlight's on you. Yeah. Uh, you could just be experienced, man. And uh, we can only hope that, you know, if the team still sticks together, that, you know, they'll come back that much harder. Um, man, Dimitri Bivol, where does he go from here, guys? Good question. Uh, better beef. Yeah. Right. Undisputed mm -hmm. lightweight. That's true. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, undisputed light heavyweight. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be awesome. That would be an awesome fight. But then they have that Canelo right, fight yeah. hanging around for him. <laughs> Big money fight. I'm sure he'll he'll think twice he'll, which fight he wants to take. But I think he said he would prefer the undisputed title uh, fight with Better yeah, I, I don't see why not. Yeah, which, which would be great. Better mm -hmm. Beef is another undefeated light heavyweight champion. Um, that guy's, uh, that yeah. guy's a, well, you know, a warrior as well, mm -hmm. and that would be a, such a treat for us fans. Um, all right, guys. Well, congratulations, Dimitri Bivol. You did your thing again. Yes, those, did. Those, those combinations, those 10-punch those combinations were just yeah. wild, man. Right. And, and I loved it. I loved it. I was like, oh, my gosh. All right, guys. Moving on to the main event that was on Showtime. We had David Morrell Jr. score an amazing 12-round technical knockout over Eidos Yerbasanuli. He defended his WBA normal super middleweight championship. I say normal, guys, because that may confuse some people. We know that in the super middleweight division, the undisputed champion is Canelo Alvarez. Mm -hmm. Right, so the WBA has this thing where the undisputed champ has the super title, and then they have different versions of their title, unfortunately. So yeah. so this is, a, I believe they call it like a normal WBA title, uh, yeah, just to, in case uh, some of the fans were confused about that. But David Morrell, man, what can you say? Uh, Cuban, Southpaw, coming into the fight, only had seven fights. And, wow. and it surprised me that he was already defending the title for like the third, fourth time. So I'm like, holy cow. Yeah. And I had heard the name, man. And uh, I'm just glad I tuned in because those skills were amazing, man. Right. He just dismantled the Eidos throughout the 12 rounds. Uh, what's your take, Vetch? You know what, man? His opponent was durable, you know? I undefeated mean, as well. Undefeated, so, yeah. yeah it wasn't want to lose. It wasn't nothing easy. Um, you know, watching the highlights, getting a, a knockout in the 12th round. Right. Who has that gas left in the tank? Right, yeah. And, and what's admirable about, about uh, David Morrell is that he could have cruised to the unanimous decision. Mm -hmm. Right? A lot of the fighters, I, I don't really like when they just cruise and do that. He was there to finish, you know, close yeah. the show. And he did that right. spectacularly, right? Yeah. Yeah. You think Neighborhood Real Ryan Reels? You know what that said? Uh, closing the show, that's how you get these title shots. You know what I mean? Like, people want to see that. that. Behind yeah, you, right? you know, like uh, Scrappy said, that's how you cut the line. You know what I mean? And I think he's a guy that can cut that line. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I know he he's... so far, right? Yeah, because he's calling out the big names. He's calling out Benavides. You know, he, he already wants to go at those... You know those those warriors already. You know yeah. what I mean. And um, I haven't really seen a whole lot of them. Yeah, me either. This was like the first complete bout that I saw of him, and I was just yeah. But what I did see of him, yeah. like he looked great. Right. You know what I mean. And yeah. uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Absolutely. But um, I know you said like there's levels to this game. There's steps. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard to say. You know when they're ready until you see him in that ring with that person. Right. Right. Yeah. And like earlier with our interview with uh, uh, with uh, Richard and Mark, you know, I was, t I was talking about you know people wanting to go in the fast lane, man. I mean, this guy's just a, one of the rare, yeah. you know, you know, uh, examples that, you know, having less than 10 fights and he's already, you know, defending the title mm -hmm. and, and, you know, um, but, but man, he's impressive, man. Yeah. You know yeah. He has the skills to pay those bills, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Well, well, that was the recap. It's fight week. All right, guys. 
So let's uh, preview the fights that are coming up this weekend. On ESPN Plus, we have the return of Sanisa Superbad Estrada mm -hmm. uh, versus Jasmine Villarino. Uh, Sanisa Estrada is defending her WBA minimum title. Um, Sanisa's the one that knocked out mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was, right? And you know what? She's one of my favorite fighters. I mean, and when I say favorite fighters, I'm not just saying women's. I mean, she's one of my favorite yeah. fighters right now. You know, her footwork, her speed, her toughness, just coming from East L.A., dude. Just wow, everything dude. about her, dude, I like. Yeah. I remember, too, we ran into her in Texas, man. Just a sweet girl, dude. You yeah. wouldn't even think she was a boxer, dude. Yeah. Just real soft-spoken, just real humble, just nice person, man. Yeah. So I don't know a whole lot about who she's fighting. Yeah, me either. So, either. I mean, it's probably just going to be a tune-up fight. It's her first fight with top rank. That's right. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think mm. they're kind of, like, choosing, you know, like, her path yeah. right now. So we'll yeah. see how she does. But I uh, suspect a, a knockout or at least yeah. unanimous decision. Yeah, you know, so. yeah. That chance, you a fan of Sinisa? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, just right. whenever she got that knockout, like, right. in that first round, oh, it was just impressive. Like the second and, knockout? I mean, you, you know, when you see somebody fight like that, you want to watch them fight again. You yeah, know, you're yeah, a fan, yeah. fan forever. So, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to see how uh, she does, you know, uh, first fight with top rank and just uh, see how they kind of uh, prepare, you know, and... Um, build her up so um, mm -hmm. yeah I'll be tuning in watching that fight yeah. I don't know much about her opponent um, like you said I think it's just a tune up kind yeah, of fight we're, right and we're making you guys aware of what's yeah. coming up but yeah perfectly said uh, also on that card we have the main event 160 pound uh, Janibek um, Kanunuli this guy's from Pakistan or I'm sorry Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan. Mm -hmm. my bad uh, following in the footsteps of Triple G this guy's a monster guys has power mm -hmm. uh, you know a great terrific jab Many fighters are already avoiding him. Uh, like, for example, Bubu Andre didn't want to fight him. Uh, so, you know, the clear duck that this guy, you know, this guy's making waves in that division. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I believe he is the WBO middleweight title, uh, champion. So he'll be defending the WB WBO middleweight champion against uh, uh, Denzel Bentley. And what a name, wow, right? Denzel right. Bentley. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah, I haven't heard of Denzel Bentley. Oh, yeah. the, it's a cool name. Um, yeah, this is probably a showcase for Jenny Beck. Yeah. Uh, you'll get, we'll all get to see him. Uh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, and in, you know, in the next episode, we will uh, uh, you know review his, his performance. And you guys can get more exposure to him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah again, that'll be on ESPN+. Plus. All right, guys. And, well... If you guys uh, watched our last episode, we talked about uh, uh, was celebrity boxing and such like that. Well, mm -hmm. on a Sunday, we're going to have the return of Floyd Money Mayweather doing an exhibition against a, YouTube, a YouTuber named Deji. Uh, it's on a Sunday. It's thirty-four ninety-five for the pay-per-view. What do you think, Ryan? Really Ryan Reels? You know what? I don't know if I'll buy it. Um, it's it's hard to say like uh, you know why he's doing this. You know what I mean. I don't right, know if it's right. just for the money or he wants to stay active to fight yeah. maybe like a McGregor again or uh, you know a bigger name. You know, yeah. but um, yeah. honestly, like uh, it's just one of those fights that is just uh, kind of just there to me. You yeah. Know what I mean? you, know, you know what I heard actually. You know, say I don't know what he's doing. I I, I heard that he ha he has a, a documentary in the works, kind of like the Last Dance with Michael Jordan. I think he's in the midst of filming something like that. Oh, okay. That's why he's having these fights to. You know, as footage for you know, for the documentary that he wants to make. Uh, at least that's what I heard, or, you know, read. So, okay. um, that Chaz, are you tuning in for that fight? Oh, you know what, man? It's um, a Sunday. We'll see. It's you know, Sunday. I mean, uh, <laughs> if I'm at home and there's nothing else to do, yeah, I'll probably watch it. Or right. if not, I'll, I'll catch up on the highlights. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's nice to see uh, yeah. Mayweather, you know, getting in the ring still and, you know, staying active and, yeah. and kind of aging that's well, for you sure. know. Good like, point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind Floyd Mayweather at all, man. He, yeah. like you said in the last episode, he paid his dues, he, yeah. he earned it. Uh, and it's a, actually an honor to see him still step in the ring yeah. and show his skills, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, so, so for these of you who are interested, that'll be on a Sunday, on this Sunday coming up. All right, guys. Well, it's been an awesome day, guys. It has, man. Uh, let's shout out all the people that made this happen, guys. Uh, thank you to Richard Torres Jr., Mark Castro, uh, Ruben Valdovinos. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, exactly. Shout little, out Little Ruben. Champ Jordan. Mm -hmm. Little Champ Jordan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome, man. You guys made our day, uh, and I hope uh, uh, you guys appreciate this footage uh, that you know they made this possible. Uh, shout out to our fans who are still supporting us. Uh, our broskies, uh, Hugo Duenas, uh, El Cat Garay, Armon Estrada, uh, all you guys that continue watching us. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and with that said, guys. Oh, shout out to our camera guys and our, and our helpers, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, you guys made this happen today. Thank Sound you very guy much. Sound guy Rob, cameraman Liam. Hey, you guys uh, were a big help today, man. Yeah. Uh, cool, man. With that said, I am Coach D. This is neighborhood hero Ryan Rios and Bad Chaz, and we're out.